Gran Odlesque by Ingre is going to be a bit of a problematic work, but we'll get to that. The piece itself is seen as a departure from neoclassicism by contemporaries. Although Ingre hated the Romantics and the Romantic style, which it so closely resembled. Now, the piece follows in the tradition of artists such as Giorgione and Titian, creating the reclining nude, and that's the basis for the painting. For example, uh, Titian's Venus of Urbino, which really starts that trend. Now, what we see here is a woman in a Turkish harem. The elongated features and cool, pallid colors reveal a mannerist influence on the work. And, well, that's not the only thing that's going to reveal a mannerist influence on the work. Let's pull up the pen and show you what I mean. When we look at it, you'll notice that he has elongated arms, back, legs, etc. For example, the calf is enormously, calf and shin are enormously long in this form. He's doing this to give her a sense of grace and elegance because we all know that the tallest and thinnest amongst us are, of course, the most graceful. If you've ever seen me do anything athletic, you would argue against that idea. But in doing so, he's created some problems for himself. For example, a thigh that would tend to connect somewhere around the navel or buttocks which are incredibly short to make up for the fact that he has lengthened the back. So there are some anatomical issues that come into play when we elongate the features. We saw this in mannerism, these same problems, and we're seeing them here. Now, she is an odlesque, a female slave or concubine in a harem. And you could imagine that in reality, her life is not exactly the lap of luxury that we see. Here we have, for example, an opium pipe, fine satin curtains, a peacock feather fan, uh, furs and linens and silks and jewelry around her. She seems to be very happy with her position, but in fact, historical reality would suggest that your typical concubine in a harem is going to be someone who is sold by their parents or otherwise doesn't want to be there, usually a slave, so someone who's there against their better wishes, against uh, their wishes overall. Now, despite all of this, Ingray came to see himself as a defender of true art against the forces of romanticism, even though he's captured something that perfectly embodies many of the romantic ideas, which I'll get to next. <laughs> 